I'm going to take a rear axle differential assembly apart on this Hemet. Had a lot of questions about can you lock it, what's it look like inside, so we'll tear it apart. Best way to see what's going on. I've got a few other questions I'm going to answer, so let's get started. Before I get started, I just want to talk a little bit about a trailer. People have been asking me about trailers, and I'm going to build this trailer here, which is the uh, M. 870A1 semi-trailer. Usually they carry equipment like bulldozers or whatever. Um, I calculated that this trailer needs to be 42 and a half inches long to match the truck. So I'll probably use a Tamiya uh, three-axle container trailer and get the parts out of that and build this trailer. That'll be a future video. Also, um, the lights. I know that um, People have talked about the beacon on top, and this is a beacon that I'm going to use. But I'm going to add a lot more lights and, and uh, six-channel radio and have light switching on and off. So that'll be upcoming, too. I'll probably do that in a video where I'm painting it. So future project, maybe a month or so, hang in there, and we'll get, find out about that. I like this beacon, though. To remove the wheel, I just use a flat-bladed screwdriver, and there's a little tab down inside. Just push the tab aside, and that cap just pops off. We've got a standard nut in there. Pull that off. It uses a standard hex adapter. You can see that it's a beadlock style wheel. Uh, very nice. The center hub is metal and the rim is plastic. Alright, so we're going to pull off the other wheel, I'll get this on its back, we'll pull this differential off. The hub adapter just pops off and it's a pin style, pretty common RC stuff. I pulled the screw holding the shocks, the screw holding the torsion arms, and then the screw underneath here that holds this fork assembly. And then the final piece is this pin style screw that holds on the coupler. And man, I'll tell you what, I had to it goes all the way through. I had to, I've got these really good low C wrenches and I couldn't believe how tight that was. I finally had to put a pair of vice grips on the handle of this to break it loose. So that's loose. This should all just come apart now. That took some prying to get off. I think probably there was some Loctite in there. But I got it off. And watch out for this little bushing down here. It comes apart in two pieces, but you don't want to lose them. They're quite small. There's our rear end. Let's pull it apart. First impressions of the uh, rear end are it's very nice. Ball bearings. Sealed ball bearing on the output shaft. It's all metal. Housing's metal. These little support arms are metal. There's an interesting axle housing is a two-piece unit. I'll pull that apart and see what it looks like. But overall, metal housing, everything looks first quality and uh, nicely put together. So I'm going to pull these, this apart and we'll see what's inside. In these uh, axles off was easy. These screws here aren't very tight. I, uh, they don't have any Loctite on them. That comes apart just like that. It's a little bit noisy. Let's see what's in there. The screws are removed. Pull the cap off. It's pretty well greased up. And our differential. 
it's it's not locked, but it's tight. So it has large ball bearings on the output shafts. Gears metal. That appears to be a plastic housing. I'll, uh, I'll pull this apart. That's interesting. That bearing is really um, wide. It's not around the axle. It's around the outside of the diff housing. Same with this one. Pop that off. I know my fingers are in the way, sorry about that. Alright. Four screws hold this uh, assembly together. So I'll pull that apart. Remove the screws from this gear. Metal gear, metal axle, metal gear. You can see the differential gears down inside. So this gear just sits in there. Everything looks good quality. They've got an adequate amount of grease, not anything you write home about. And the grease is really sticky. And that's probably why the differential action is, uh, is slowed down. It's got a real sticky grease in there. It looks like there's enough grease that I'm not worried about taking apart the other differentials right now. I'm going to go ahead and pull these gears out so we can take a look at what's inside there. I do not see any designed way to lock this diff. There's no screw hole. There's no easy, apparent way to lock the diff. And I suspect that's for a couple reasons, but one of them with an almost 20 pound truck, if you lock the diffs, that's going to put an awful lot of strain on these parts back here. Um, especially uh, the front, and I, I, I can't imagine locking the front diffs. Okay, we'll pull this out here. Let's see the spider gears. One thing I noted that's really nice is the axles are exactly the same length, so, so there is no left or right axle, which makes it nice. You don't have to worry about getting those mixed up. I'm going to go ahead and re-grease these parts with my favorite triple guard grease and put it back together. Looks okay to me. I cleaned off all the grease. And a couple things I want to point out. One is that these differential shafts just drop right through the metal gear. There is no bearing. There's not even a bushing. And this one drops right through the plastic housing, so it, it rotates in the plastic housing. I don't really like that design much. I'd like to see a bearing in that housing but there's not enough material for me to put one in. Now, this bearing fits over here and supports the whole housing. So the housing itself is going to roll fine, but these shafts are going to eventually wear these housings. So I'm going to use this triple guard, really thick grease, inside the differential housing and then I'm going to replace the grease on the outside gears with Termia ceramic grease. The they, sticky grease they used is just adding drag here. It's fine inside the housing. You want a real sticky grease in there. I will uh, put this back together and show you a couple things along the way. It's kind of hard because this, this grease is messy, messy and it's hard to work my camera. You can also look at my putting together a Termia semi-truck rear differential to get some other views of how I would put these together. So the first thing I want to do is get some of this grease around the back side of this. Okay. Where I drop it through this housing. So it's greased up. Same thing with this one. Add a little grease here. 
This stuff is really thick. when I drop it through here. So now those are lubed where they run through that part. Then I'm going to fill this with triple guard grease and just pack everything in there as, as tight as I can get it with grease. So I'll be back in a second. I have packed this completely full with this triple guard grease. It's just as full as I can get it. Pre-grease this gear. So now this will go back on. And we will put the screws back in and bolt this assembly together. And that grease will slow down the action and give me a, a really nice uh, differential. Even though it's not locked, it's going to make it tighter. It still turns, so no chance of snapping an axle or very little chance of snapping an axle and everything looks supported pretty well so I'll put the rest of those in but yeah the diff action is pretty tight that'll be just wonderful diffs all back together as I mentioned I'm going to grease this gear with to me a ceramic grease it's a lighter weight grease. You don't need a sticky grease out here. Matter of fact, that'll just make your truck engine work harder. Now, also with bearings, you don't need any grease on the bearings. So we'll put the bearing back on the shaft. Drop that in the housing. Put a bearing on the outside and drop this in here. Okay, works fine. It's a lot quieter than before. Probably because of the Tamiya grease on the outside. And then we'll put this housing back together. Get everything bolted up. Housing's back together, works fine. The outer axle just presses over here. This part fits through here. And then we screw it back together, but I'm going to add a little Loctite since we're metal to metal. important to use Loctite on all these metal to metal screws and and then not reef them up too tight. If you've got Loctite on there you don't need to reef it to the nth degree. goes, we'll do the other one, and there's a bearing that drops in here. The outer axle. The other side needs to be ready to go back in. Ready to go back in here. Put this bushing through here. spacer. Take this lock pin and have a little bit of Loctite. Now it's just wiggle it into position here. through. Leave it loose for a minute while I that bolt through the bottom. The 
yolks hooked back up. We've got this back in. Tighten that up. Now we just have to reassemble these arms. Pretty much just the reverse order of how we took everything apart. These are not shocks, these are spring dampers. Suspension probably would benefit from some really nice oil shocks, but they seem to work adequately. Okay, I'm going to bolt this back together. All back together. Everything works fine, looks good. Pretty easy to take it out and take it apart. I think I showed you pretty much what it's made out of. The rest of them I'm not even going to take apart because they seem to be greased adequately and loctited properly. So, next thing I'll do on this is probably uh, adding more lights and painting and figuring out a sound system. That might not be for a few weeks, so stay tuned. Thanks again for watching.